gold diggers, sugar daddies, sugar babes, gigolos. <laughs> we, we've all heard of these kind of people, and I've had my share coming after me. I could have written a 300-page book on the psychology of this particular segment of the population, but I won't do this to you. Instead, I will discuss today four, and only four, elements in the psychology, or maybe even psychopathology, of gold diggers. Now, rough definition, before we embark on our amazing journey, gold diggers are people, usually women, but not exclusively women, of course. Gigolos are <laughs> kind of cool gold diggers. So, and they're men. So, these are people who regard relationships as the surest and quickest way to money, benefits, monetary or otherwise, and the good life, luxury life, easy life, lazy life, and so on and so forth. They dismiss hard work, although gold digging, I think, is a lot of hard work, <laughs> but they dismiss classical, accepted, socially sublimated types of hard work, hard study, hard anything. They regard other people's wallets and bank accounts as rightfully theirs, um, directly or indirectly. Now, only a small minority of these people are psychopaths. In other words, even though they're goal-oriented, not all of them, or a small minority of them, are callous and ruthless and unscrupulous and unethical and immoral and even criminalized. The vast majority are not. They have a peculiar way of looking at the world, which I will try to explicate in this short video. At the basis of the foundation of it all, there is insecurity. It's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, these people are insecure about the world. They regard the world as a hostile, frustrating, unforgiving environment. And on the other hand, they're insecure about themselves. They don't trust themselves to be self-efficacious, able to extract the best possible favorable outcomes from the environment, from other people. They don't believe, they couldn't convince themselves that they're able to act in the environment and on the environment in ways, in ways which guarantee ultimate happiness, well-being, contentment, accomplishments. So this is a double, double form of insecurity. I don't trust the world, and I don't trust myself to act in the world and on the world. Insecurity is the basis of this kind of behavior. It's as if they're trying to convert other people into the equivalent of a secure base. It's as if they're trying to um, appropriate other people's accomplishments, confidence, self-confidence, assertiveness, ac access, to contacts or, or to money and so on. It's as if they're trying to live by proxy, vicariously, through other people, annexing other people's lives. And this is a solution to their insecurity. And in this sense, gold diggers and so on and so forth, they're clingy, they're needy. One could even venture to say that probably they're codependent, although there are no studies to substantiate. Next point is entitlement. These people feel entitled to the good life, entitled to luxury, entitled to glittering company, entitled to not work, entitled to not study, entitled to travel all over the world, entitled to complete and utter independence, entitled. This entitlement which is a hallmark of narcissism, is very common among gold diggers. And 
it drives them to behave in ways which are essentially extortionate. Everything is a transaction in life. Every marriage, every relationship, there's a give and take. That's normal. But what is abnormal with gold diggers is their tendency to externalize aggression via the act of giving and via the act of taking. They, it's a kind of sublimated or passive aggression embedded built into, baked into, hardwired into the interactions of gold diggers. Their entitlement is aggressive entitlement. They go for it because they're convinced of the outcomes. Gold diggers would try to create the maximum asymmetry, an asymmetry in age, so very young, very old, an asymmetry in beauty, very beautiful, very handsome, very ugly. They rely on these asymmetries to impose and enforce an agenda on the other party. If you want my youth, if you want my beauty, if you want access to my body, if you want my company, you have to pay. And you have to pay through the nose. Again, it's extortionate. By doing this, the gold digger objectifies her mark or her target. She treats her partner as a kind of tool or instrument or venue or channel or conduit, anything but a human being. As far as the gold digger is concerned, the person she's chosen to victimize in a way is actually nothing more than a walking, talking bank account. And so this objectification is very extreme in gold digging. There, is no, there isn't even a minimum of emotional attachment or bonding of any kind. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. There's no affection. It's cold and calculated to the extreme. And this is, of course, psychopathic. So we have seen by now codependent traits, narcissistic traits, codependent traits, insecurity and clinging, narcissistic traits, entitlement, aggressive entitlement, and psychopathic traits, objectification. The whole thing is wrapped up in a philosophy and ideology of transactionalism. Everything in life is give and take. Your role is to minimize the giving and maximize the taking. It's a zero-sum game. There are winners. For every winner, there's a loser. For every loser, there's a winner. There's no win-win situation. The gold digger is after, is after depleting the resources of her partner and moving on to the next partner. She's a scavenger, or he is a scavenger in many ways. This parasitism, this derivative life, this extreme transactionalism characterizes or separates gold digging from all other types of human interactions, which also involve, of course, implicit or explicit transactions. Here, the transaction rules. The relationship is secondary, byproduct, side effect of the transaction. And the transaction is always lopsided and exploitative. Okay, a few thoughts about gold digging. By the way, there are gold digger forums where gold diggers teach each other all kinds of techniques which border very much on extortion and blackmail, but they are still legal. It's emotional blackmail, basically. So there are forums of gold diggers. There are forums of sugar babes. Uh, there are even forums of sugar daddies, believe it or not. It's a whole industry. And it's pretty institutionalized. There are even kind of schools online to teach you how to become one. And there are parameters. There are draft agreements. I mean, it's really impressive when you delve deep into it. I use the words mark and target and victim because ultimately the partner of the gold digger is all three. Even 
if and when the sugar daddy believes that he has got the upper hand, that he is getting the better end of the stick, that the deal is tilted in his favor, that's self-deception. Ultimately, the gold digger, gold digger gets to keep her youth, her sexuality, and the target's money. <laughs> Not a bad business. So, good luck if you choose this career, and drop me a note. Tell me how it went. <laughs>